shut up and sit down. Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So I have this project that I worked on a number of years or so ago, which I would like to walk you all through. So I've actually tried to make this video three or four times now, and I'm finding it just exceptionally difficult to explain to you what I did and why I did it and, and how it works in a way that I feel is meaningful and educational. So the long and short of it is, uh, so I, I, I used to have a model railroad, uh, created some models for it. I wanted to put some LEDs on the model railroad and control the LEDs individually and light things up and make them look, you know, really animated and sexy and cool and whatnot. So I created a circuit that uh, allowed me to control a vast number of LEDs using uh, multiplexing and a matrix sort of LED environment. Um, I wanted to walk you through the circuit and explain how it actually worked and whatnot. So it turns out it's it's actually really hard to do without being able to draw in real time and and kind of point at things and whatnot, which is difficult to do with my setup. Um, actually, it's impossible to do with my setup here. Uh, so I decided I'd just go out and find some videos. Uh, I'll link to them uh, downstairs uh, down in the description here on if you want to learn about you know matrix. LEDs and multiplexing and whatnot. Um, but suffice it to say that I created a circuit that I'm able to control. Uh, let's see, it was 48 rows and 16 columns, I want to say. So roughly 760, 768, I think, is the number total LEDs. Uh, the project itself actually uh, turned out to be closer to 600 and some odd LEDs uh, spread across two different control boards. Um, but so if you're interested in seeing the schematic and having me walk you through the schematic, I actually already have a video of that. Um, I, I've watched it now a couple times and I don't find it as enlightening as I want it to be. Uh, but I'm more than willing to post it if people have questions. Uh, so to that end, I just want to uh, kind of cut over to some video walking you through the actual model itself. Um, now this is not 3D printed, so this is a departure from my normal sort of 3D printing things. It's a, it's a model that I built and then modified with these LEDs. Uh, kind of just walking you through the modifications I made and then just show you a video of, uh, of the output. So let's get to it. Okay, so the picture you see here in front of you are the two printed circuit boards that I use to create the uh, strips of the LEDs as well as the driver. So the one in front is the smaller of the two, which is the Arduino uh, shield that contains the driver circuitry, both the high side and low side drivers. And then the board behind is a, um, a large uh, printed circuit board that has all of the strips on it. So each one of the uh, vertical strips you see there are individual strips that will be cut uh, that were cut and, and created individual strips for the power tower. This next picture shows you the LEDs as I had uh, soldered them on and you can see across the top is a list of the uh, I did it one panel at a time manually placed all the LEDs which is excruciatingly painful but uh, across the top you can see the different colors that I have labeled there so red, green, yellow, orange uh, with the different colors and blue that I used so so this is a picture of the printed circuit board, the shield on top of the Arduino. I've only populated half of the chips. This is just a test run to make sure that it worked properly. You can see on top is the uh, low side driver and on the bottom is the, actually uh, the top is the high side driver, which is the, uh, the FETs and the uh, bottom side is the low side driver, which is the sink for all the current that's going through the LEDs. Next picture shows the LED strips after they were fully assembled. I uh, soldered all the LEDs on using um, surface mount heat wave sort of soldering and then connected all of the strips, all eight of them together horizontally for the representing the rows and then the columns will be represented by the, the vertical strips themselves. Next picture is actually showing the strips of LEDs as they were attached to the power tower. You can see that there's one, uh, I'm sorry, two strips per side. So there's a total of eight strips that run vertically uh, on each side. 
The next picture here shows the what I'll characterize as the master wiring that I did for it, a master full wiring that I did for all of this. You can see all of the rows and the columns fed down through the holes that are pre-existed in the actual power tower uh, model. It turns out that there was uh, the 48 rows plus the 16 columns and then some additional wiring for power and some and whatnot. So it became quite a logistical nightmare to pull all the cables through the existing holes without modifying the, uh, the model, but uh, that's what I did. Okay, so the final picture I'm showing here is the completed model. On the left-hand side, you'll see one LED driver, which represents 16 uh, columns and 32 rows, 576 LEDs, which are the vertical LEDs that make up the primary tower. Then the right-hand side is a uh, 16 rows by 8 columns, which is five, 128 LEDs, representing a total of 704 LEDs for this model, which is a staggering number of LEDs. Uh, so it was, a, again, a wiring challenge, but something that we were able to pull off, and I'm uh, quite proud of the output. Okay, so there's the project. I know it was kind of complex, and I do apologize for some of the gobbledygook in there, but, um, you know... I like the project. It turned out very well, and I hope you like it as well. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Um, I am going to now leave you with a short video uh, showing the rest of the uh, LEDs going, as well as a small animation uh, of the power tower going up and down. Thanks, everyone.